To some of you this will be disappointing to hear, but this will likely be my last entry in my Dark Souls lore series. I will have at least one more video that clarifies a few things and admits to corrections on others, but this tenth entry will be my last official for the lore. I'm also just about out of content, but this last entry will contain a lot of speculation. Be prepared for that, because there is not as much proof as I can usually provide. I'm going to come right out and say it. I believe the goddess Velka to be the Maiden in Black. Well, it's probably more accurate to say that the demon soul inside of the Maiden in Black is that of Velka. The primary reason Velka exists, or what she exists for, is to punish sinners and seek their absolution. She does this through the exterior use of the Dark Moon Blades. They seek out sinners of all kinds. Their targets are ranked higher on their kill list through the use of indictments sold by Oswald. The indictment description reads, Slips sold by Bishop of Velka, Goddess of Sin. If you are killed by an invader, use this to report the crime of that trespasser. The indicted player will be added to the list of unfortunate souls who will one day face the wrath of the Blades of the Dark Moon. Similar wording can be found about the Book of Guilty. The Goddess of Sin, Velka, oversees the list of guilty who have disrespected the gods of their covenants. There are a few very interesting elements about these descriptions, in my opinion at least. Oswald, and all of those who sell indictments, are known as bishops, which implies a holy religion of sorts. However, Velka is called the goddess of sin. Now, she's obviously not a sinning goddess, as we know, but instead one who oversees and controls sin. I find it strange that the clarification of punishing those who betray their covenants is established. It doesn't seem like the religion following Velka would discriminate sin in this fashion. But they do, and I believe there is a reason. Lastly, there is an apparent allegiance with the Dark Moon Blades. While this coven is punishing sinners and serving Gwendolyn, what they are secretly doing most is countering the work of the Dark Lord. It's my theory that Velka and Gwendolyn are in league with each other, both attempting to stop the Dark Lord, but for different reasons. Gwendolyn wants to stop the Pygmy's plans anyway. However, what Velka truly wants is to stop the Dark Lord, who, who is, if you've watched my earlier entries, I believe to be the old one, the big boss from Demon Souls. Also, you guys should uh, have a mental laugh at how sometimes impossible it is to say indictments cor correctly. Instead, you say indictments, and I said Maiden in Black, Maiden in Black, so many times while recording this section before this one. Alright, back to it. Some other things about Velka is her connection with certain miracles. The Vow of Silence reads, Secret Rite of the Black-Haired Witch Velka. Velka, the goddess of sin, is a rogue deity, but she is versed in arts both new and old, and she is considered to have a great range of influence even as the gods are concerned. Also, the Karmic Justice miracle reads, Miracle of the Black-Haired Witch Velka. Temporary auto-counter versus heavy damage. For each sin there is punishment, and it is the task of Velka to define the sin and mete out the punishment. What I enjoy about these miracles is that we already know that gods is a term referring to the lords of Anorlando. They are one and the same, which means Velka is a physical person and has definitely interacted, or at least been in contact, with some of the lords. She is supposedly well equipped with ancient and modern arts, which means she could, which could mean she is aware of how to control the old one before the first flame plan, and will be able to stop him again once in Volataria. Also, it's stated that it's Velka's place to decide how to deal with those who sin, which could include outright stopping and sealing the demons. Now hold on to your butts, because this is where the major speculation begins. A few other things that barely provide proof, or even less than what I've already sadly provided. Many of the descriptions above reference Velka as, as a black-haired witch, and the Maiden in Black also has black hair. In Demon Souls, we know with certainty that there is a demon of sorts inside her, and that it is powerful enough to cast the old one away, sealing him once again. There is the clever fact that the Pardoner set of armor, or the Black Cleric set, as it is known in game, is found in the Painted World, as well as Velka's rapier. Now, these are not items specifically used by Velka. The armor reads, the partner's attire is uniformly black in color and is said to be imbued with Velka's mystical power, which provides resistance against all manner of magic. The rapier reads, a symbolic powerful thrusting sword used by the partner serving Velka, goddess of sin. It is no mere symbol to be sure. The partner is, a, is an inhuman swordsman and wields this enchanted blade of special sword technique. 
let's pause there a moment before we come to the location of these items. Back to the location of these items. Mystical power and inhuman swordsmen. This could be because those who serve Velka directly are also touched by the demonic presence that's inside her. Now, lastly, these items are found in the painted world of Aramaeus. Of course, that is where Priscilla resides. Seems strange that an abomination who all others despise, including her own mother, would be sought for absolution. Priscilla is in fact the epitome of sin, a child born between a lord and a dragon. What, is Arama what if Aramaeus was a pardoner, and he did not die from some violent cause, but eventually from natural causes? I believe that Velka sought to keep Priscilla purposefully safe because she has the life hunt ability. Seath, Seth, Seath, excuse me, failed to capitalize on this, and so Velka swoops in hoping that Priscilla will take the opportunity to kill the upcoming Dark Lord. While he is still an undead, while she or anyone can. After Gwyn is dead, not even the life hunt will be worthwhile. As for why then Priscilla gives the player a choice to fight or not, we can't be sure. Perhaps her agreement is lost over time, after the death of her protector, or perhaps she simply does not wish to emulate the ill behavior of her parents. What she seems to want the most is simply for the player to move on, to leave her safe haven, which was granted to her by Velka. There is even a small relation to the mask of Velka in her choice of words. The description for the mask goes, Mask worn by the pardoners serving Velka, the goddess of sin. The pardoners listen to the confessions of sinners, urging reflection and salvation. The, their masks symbolize separation from worldly desires. Meanwhile, Priscilla's dialogue is, Who art thou? One of us thou art not. Us, being, of, being the absolved? Continuing, If thou has misstepped into this world, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. If thou seekest I, thine desires will not, shall be requited not. Thou must returneth whence thou came. This land is peaceful, its inhabitants kind, but thou dost not belong. I beg of thee, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. Her wording choice is even similar to the maiden in black, which can mean that Velka oversaw the upbringing of the child after a certain point. Perhaps even Velka is Aramaeus in secret, using an alias in order to hide the painting in Honor Lundo. When you attack Priscilla, as the Dark Lord that you are becoming, she says, I expected as much from thee. Why dost thee hurry toward thine death? Death, excuse me. So, I'm not used to speaking in these, uh, this language. So perhaps she expected you to attack her because she has been taught that the Dark Lord is coming. She knows her ability is deadly to your kind, which would mean a demon mistaken as a lord, so she believes you are hurrying towards your death by assaulting her, she with the life hunt ability. When she kills you, Priscilla says, why could thou not let us be? Didst thou not see why Aramaeus created this world? Putting all of what I've said together, she could mean that Velka obviously created this world to keep Priscilla safe, pardoning her in the process so that she could be used to kill you, the Dark Lord. It does all make sense, but as I said, there's a lot of speculation going on here. It's especially fitting if you're in love with my Dark Souls prequel to Demon Souls theory, as I am. I want to take a moment to thank all of you impersonally. Some of you have been rather encouraging, especially when early on I didn't think it was worth my time to continue. I apologize again for taking so long to get these last parts out. I became distracted before I could finish, but I'm glad I finally got there. If you haven't done yourself a favor and watched the lore series done by Quilag and Epic Name Bro, you definitely should. They are both smarter than I, and Quilag draws better while Epic creates masterful videos. I don't know what my next project will be. I'm considering finding a way to purchase a digital camcorder so that I can record some in-game footage. As far as lore goes, I've been requested to do a couple of things, but nothing of yet has my interest. I still look forward to making more vids in the future, and once again, I love you all.